Oh, butterfly. It's a butterfly. Crazy. I'm actually kind of afraid of bugs. I'm not gonna Are lie. You? Yeah. All right. We'll, All right. We'll, <laughs> out. All right. I like uh Hi. just an hour ago you're still on stage. Yes. Uh amazing set. Thanks. You're one of the rare sets that I was able to go see. Okay, cool. Great reaction. Thanks. Yeah, have um, fun. I know that you were in Montreal last April. I'm putting yes, you on the spot. I say Montreal. What's the first thing that comes to mind? First thing that comes to mind are, is poutine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's what I think of. <laughs> and I think of the venue that we played at as well. I can see it in my mind. Can you? Yeah, I don't remember what it was called, but it was a really cool like round room. Yeah. It was really fun. It was yeah. called L'Astral. Yeah, okay. That's there probably because I couldn't, I could never pronounce you it. So that's probably why it. I don't remember the name. Yeah. There you go. Um, it, it's been uh, just under a year since you've released Narrated for You. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's been quite a, quite, a, quite a year. Are you taking time to soak it all in or is it just flying by? Yeah, well, I mean, it is kind of flying by and it's like, you know that saying where it's like a watch pot never boils, where it's like if you're, if you're when you're in it and you're looking at it, it feels like nothing has changed. But then when you take a step back and you look at the grand, like you look at the picture, yeah. you're like, wow, a lot has changed. Um, but I mean, I still live at home with my mom, so it's like... Same stuff, yeah. Amazing. But sometimes um, I don't like to think about how much has changed because it makes me feel uh, like pressure to make new music, and you know. So, yeah. are you are you able to write right now, or it's yeah, just like I've been writing, but the last few months have been a little bit challenging. Um, but we'll see. Sometimes you just need to put the pen down. Take a break. You just put out a new track pretty recently, Jesus in L.A. I did, yeah. Is that something that you had in your back pocket or that just spur uh, the moment? Yeah, actually I'd written a lot. I wrote that last year um, and uh, I'd always I'd always liked it, but I wasn't sure about it. And like, it's not like a religious song or anything. And I didn't want people to get the wrong idea about the track. So I was like, oh, maybe I won't release it. But then something in me was just like, oh, I should put it out. So yeah. I did. A bit uh, autobiographical. Yeah, it's just you, about... You'd have the experience where yeah. you moved out to LA in 2013. Got a record deal. All right, you know. Got you know, dropped. All right, here we go. Yeah. Um, and so I, I could see how, like, going to LA, yeah, I'm not finding Jesus out of here. Right. It, it's not everything that it's cracked up to be. Yeah, it's kind of like, I don't know, I feel like, and it doesn't even have to be California. Like, it could just be anywhere the grass is always greener. You're like, I'm going to move and everything is going to be great. And you don't necessarily find the thing that you're looking for. So I think not everyone gets a second chance. Right. You got, you know, a record label signs you, you get that chance, you get dropped. Um, you were able to get that second chance. Looking back now that things are going really, really well, um, is, is it something that you did that you can kind of pinpoint me like, hey, I'm not going to mess it up this time. Like, th this has to work. Y yeah, well, I mean, I dropped out of school, so I didn't really have a choice. Um, and, uh, I mean, definitely having, like, the first experience where I got signed and dropped, I learned a lot. So, but when it came back around, I was like, okay, I'm not, I can't let this opportunity slip again. I have to really work as hard as I possibly can. So... There's a lot of different times, a lot of different things that I learned, but yes, that's that's what happened. A lot of people your age, a lot of artists, have kind of a love-hate relationship with social media. Yeah. Um, you know, it can be amazing, right. can be pretty unhealthy. Um, Considering that social media has given you quite the push, right. do you have a, a bit more of a love-love relationship? Uh, no, I have both. I mean, I don't... I think it's more about, like, not like I don't love-hate social media. Social media just is. It's more of, like, how it makes... How, how I respond to it. I wish I was, like, more capable. I wish I could just regulate my emotions a little bit more effectively but sometimes like you know someone will say something mean or whatever and make me ruin my day yeah you know? yeah but you read everything um i will i try to because i want to know how people feel and it and yeah but yes i do <laughs> um let me down slowly has been a, a song that as we say in the music biz has legs you know yeah. it's the song that keeps on giving um how did uh, alicia come into the picture um, I just was always a fan of her music, but uh, she was talking about Let Me Down Slowly in an interview and I just sent her a message. Um, one of her fans sent me the interview and I'd always been a fan of her so I messaged her and said we should write together and she was um, out on the road and I was out on the road so um, we couldn't really get together to like write a song from scratch but I said maybe you want to you know, do a verse on Let Me Down Slowly and that's how it happened. Sometimes you got to throw things out into the universe and they yeah. happen. Yeah, well that's the thing, that's the amazing thing about social media is like so all of the collaborations that I've done and artists that I've worked with have come through literally just hitting them up on Twitter. 
That's yeah. how you became friends with John Mayer as well? Yeah, and Khalid and like a bunch of different artists, you know, just being like, yo, I love you. Troy Sivan, like, yeah, yeah it's crazy. Do you, uh, you still have those pinch me moments? Or, yeah, or is Elon it starting Musk, to feel Elon, normal? No, Elon Musk was crazy when I tweeted him and he tweeted me back. That was like the coolest response ever. But no, it's always, it's always crazy um, when another artist that you admire um, acknowledges your existence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, now that you know that it works and you can, you know, hit up people and they'll reply, do you have to like be careful and not just start hitting up every single person you like? No, I'm going crazy. I'm reaching yeah. out to everybody. Yeah, I don't care. This is my chance. You only live once. You know, you got to meet everybody. <laughs> I like it. Um, this is like classic festival question. There's a you know ton of acts on the bill, people that you get to meet backstage. Mm. If you could collaborate with uh, one person who's here at Oceaga, who would it be? I think Sigrid is really dope. She's super cool. But I mean, I, I would write a song with anybody who's on the bill. It's like a great yeah. lineup. So I can't pick, but I'd be honored to work with anyone. I met B Miller before. She's really nice. I like her music a lot. So. Yeah, you collaborate with her? I haven't, but maybe we will. No, but you, you would? I already, I asked her if she would write a song with me. So she said yes. She said yes? Yeah. Because we, we talked to her a few hours ago okay. and she said the same thing. So I wanted to kind of like put like a musical blind date like okay. you want to work with her she wants to work with you she's ding, 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 she's ding. wonderful okay yeah, so i love her music let's get it done then all right sounds good um what's next for you what, what are you hoping to be a year from now if we talk again uh i hope that i'm just with wherever i am like professionally i'm just happy in general i just want to be like content um i feel like i'm always like thinking that the next thing i achieve will make me happy yeah just like balancing my emotions and Not just being chasing. happy regardless of what happens. You know, the fact that I've been able to do as many things as I have have done is like, that should be enough. Time Magazine uh, calls you a pop storyteller for the next generation. Is that is yeah. that an accurate description? I mean, that's what I want to be. You know, yeah. all of the artists that I listen to, like my favorite artists are like John Mayer, Paul Simon, Bob Dylan, Leonard Cohen, Carole King, James Taylor. Like that's the kind of artist that I want to be, you know? writing for others as well or always for you you think oh uh, yeah i mean i could but right now i'm focused on my own success just because like uh i still have a long way to go you know i don't necessarily i don't like feel safe by any means like i always feel like this could all go away at any moment so i have to keep focused on on my music amazing well uh best of luck with everything oh uh, thank you uh, it seems like it's going pretty pretty good I so, hope so uh up and up man all right thanks, thanks. a lot nice to meet you cool